Today we're back with another episode on the Turbo E36 M3 project. If you watched the last episode, you know that we focused on getting the main portion of the exhaust done. We completed the exhaust from the turbo outlet all the way back to the muffler. So today we're gonna focus on building the wastegate pipe and plumbing that in properly. So that will basically complete the exhaust for this car at that point. There's some challenges with how this wastegate tube needs to be routed. So I'm gonna get you guys underneath the car, show you the challenges that we're gonna be facing doing this, and also talk through the plan that I have to complete this. And then we'll show you what we're gonna be using for this project and then start cutting and welding. So underneath the car here, let me show you the challenge, the biggest challenge of this wastegate pipe. Or try to show you, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but if you can look through the gap up there to see where the studs are, the wastegate outlet that's here on the exhaust manifold, you can barely see my finger up there, is like right against where the tunnel tucks back down for the transmission tunnel. So this surface here, is so close to where that outlet is that I can't even use a regular bend. Like a, a one diameter, one and a half inch pipe hits the tunnel. So no matter how short I cut it, it hits the tunnel if I'm using the full length of a bend. So what I'm gonna have to do is do some wonky things with pie cuts and cutting things on angles to get that to not hit because if it's touching, it's one thing for it to like be touching or very close when it's installed, but you can't install it. Like the studs are too long to even get the flange with a tube welded to it over onto the uh, exhaust manifold. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two then is underneath here, I can't even show you guys. The way that the studs are up there, if you came straight out or tried to come straight out and then go down, you cover up that stud and then you can't put a nut on it. So I have to come out of the flange, go towards the transmission, and then that leaves the nut exposed and then I need to snake back over to come down through here and then we're gonna put the wastegate right here and then come out of the side of the wastegate and into this exhaust tube here. So that's the overall plan for how to accomplish this. I've done some mock-ups with stuff taped together and with it all taped up, the full length of it down to the wastegate, you were able to snake that tube in there and put it on with the downpipe in the way. Originally when I was doing all this, I was thinking that the downpipe was going to have to be off of the car in order to install the wastegate tube, which isn't the end of the world, but it's just kind of annoying to have to take your exhaust off to get stuff out. So I'm not going to guarantee this until I'm done with it, but I'm thinking it's going to be able to be removed in a separate piece without taking the exhaust out of the way. We're going to find out by the end of this if that's actually true, but that's the plan. So those are the two hurdles with doing this. So now with that, let's go over to the workbench and show you what we're using to accomplish this piping. So for this project, I called up my favorite people at Stainless Bros and placed an order for a bunch of one and a half inch stainless steel tubing. So that's what we're gonna be using to accomplish this wastegate pipe from the exhaust manifold down to the actual wastegate and also feed it into the exhaust because we're not doing an open dump on this. We're going to dump it back into the exhaust. And if you watched the last episode, you'll remember 
We designed some flanges in Fusion 360 and ordered them from Send Cut Send. So we're going to be using those as well. Two of them are for the wastegate and then one of them is from the exhaust manifold outlet. And if you were paying attention to those last clips showing the material, you noticed that some of that stuff was already cut and ground to size because I did a lot of effort to make things fit and test fit ahead of recording stuff. So instead of showing you guys trying to make everything fit, we're gonna start with just tacking everything together and showing you guys as long as when it's tacked, it fits properly, showing you guys what it looks like on the car in a pre-assembled state. So I'm gonna switch you guys over to a time lapse, get the welder out, start tacking all this stuff together. Well, with the wastegate mounted now, the last thing is to connect it into the exhaust, and that's gonna be this simple tube. So, as you can see, that is the view underneath the car now. Let's see if I can show you. This is barely up above the frame rail, but still above it, so it works. And then this pipe, is gonna go in like this and then Y up into the exhaust. So from this angle, it's pretty close to being spot on to where it needs to be. So I think I'm gonna start with just trimming it to try and get the angle to match into this. So that is a nice flat run in. And then after that, we'll be able to see how close we are with that. Might need a little bit of a haircut, but we're gonna start there and see what happens. Let's get cutting. I'll bring you guys back when I'm final test fitting this. So we got the tube all done. So this is hand coped with a flat disc on an angle grinder to match up to the profile on this tube. So it indexes into the tube off the wastegate and then with some finagling it fits up to the exhaust. So we get good flow out of the side of the wastegate, mates up pretty flat. And then we've already marked the box here that we have to cut out. So it's gonna pain me to blast a hole through this exhaust that I've now welded up, but it's the name of the game. So you gotta do if you're gonna shove your wastegate fumes back into your exhaust. So now we're gonna go do that. And then after that, we can tack this baby to that. And for the most part, it's gonna be final at that point. Uh, and then just needs fully welded out. So let's go put a giant hole through the side of this fresh exhaust. We 
got the hole open up here. I uh, spent some time with the grinder after shoving the uh, step bit through it. So open it up to a nice oval. The Sharpie outline that you can see here is the outer edge of the tube traced uh, when it was coped. So I left myself a little bit of meat there just in case um, I really didn't want to be like welding edge to edge. So I left myself a bit of extra just so I didn't blow through it completely. We're going to get everything over to the workbench now and start welding all these tubes together and make it 100% permanent of how these are going to be done. So I'll pick you guys back up once I'm done welding all those tubes. Now with all the tube work done, we can go install this stuff in the car. And I'll show you guys one thing that is a happy accident with this that I found out when I took this out of the car. So let's walk over, start putting this in, and I'll talk through what that little surprise was. So the little surprise with this that I was really happy to find out was you can actually install this from the engine bay side of the car. So. I know in the beginning of this, I was saying that I was hoping to make this uh, installable and removable with the like downpipe in the way. Uh, now the downpipe is down there and this slides right in. So it's pretty nice. Uh, I did not expect to do this and uh, I will definitely not claim that this was on purpose. Uh, it was definitely an accident, but it is super nice that you are able to put this in and out from the top of the car. Because really when you do this, you get better access to the studs that hold this to the exhaust manifold. And like that, it's in. I just gotta put the uh, nuts on it. As you can tell from the lift being empty beside me, the E36 is not here anymore. So I know it was kind of an abrupt end of the video because I really didn't walk you guys through what I did on the exhaust. Um, after that last clip, 
The only thing that was needed to be welded was the two exhaust hangers, 202 sensor bungs, and then of course the wastegate tube in. So got all that stuff done. Unfortunately, I had some personal stuff go on that kind of stopped me from having the time to record everything that I was doing. So that's kind of why this is abrupt and just unfortunate to not be able to document it on YouTube all that well. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, finished the exhaust up and Malik decided that he wanted the car back. So uh, took that back down to him. And now with the lift empty, we're gonna be back to working on more of what I consider to be my normal content. So it's been like a year since I've touched the transmission for the Mark II. So we're gonna work on that for sure. Uh, this thing needs some love as well. It's, uh, it's shown its age and the fact that I don't care for it because it is the one like running and driving thing. And we'll finally get around to putting together an introduction video for my new truck, which you guys saw in the uh, garage tour, but haven't seen since. So that's what's in store coming up. Uh, again, I wish I had more video to show you of like the final product of the exhaust on the E36. But if you're interested in seeing more of that car as it gets done, uh, Malik is very active on his Instagram page, which I will put his uh, username down below and uh, follow along with it there because it'll be an awesome car when it's done. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take to get done, but it will be an awesome car when it is done. So with that, that's going to wrap this up and uh, we'll see everybody next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.